Hello friends, been a while. Um, this is just a little project that I started recently. It's part of a bigger project and I wanted to do a development log. Pay no attention to the extreme damage to the um, parts here. I, uh, I was doing a durability test and nearly destroyed it just trying to get it open after I put it together. So this is a wheel bearing and uh, bearings not exactly a new concept for 3D printing they're like print in place bearings but this one is I don't know maybe special in the sense that it's a hundred percent PLA so you don't need marbles you don't need ball bearings you can print the whole thing secondly it's sturdy enough to support a lot of weight. It's actually designed to be a wheel to support a human body, so it's um, it's very sturdy. And um, also, uh, it's super precisely engineered and very high definition in terms of topology and geometry. In fact, it's it's probably the most polygons I've ever used in a SketchUp model to design one of my artifacts. So anyway, without further ado, I'm going to put it together and give a little demonstration. So this is what a bearing half looks like. And the reason I designed it this way is so that it can print on the print bed. And normally you can't print a sphere. A perfect sphere very well without supports and I don't like using supports so this was my solution and uh, basically there's a zero tolerance uh, little hexagon thing that's six millimeters long so three millimeters goes into one hemisphere and three millimeters goes into the other hemisphere to put these together you just need to kind of there's a little chamfer just enough on the edges of the hexagon so that you can create um, a fit there and then uh, you can use a hammer or I like to use a clamp to just pop pop the hemispheres together and that did not go smoothly as it's supposed to it totally destroyed that one doesn't normally happen but because I'm doing this on video it's obvious that things are gonna go wrong <sighs> honestly just tapping it together with a hammer usually works just fine but it really depends on how well you get that fitting that initial fitting and as long as the initial fitting is good you shouldn't have any trouble joining these together perfectly like like this one just did so yeah that's how you make the bearings and these are never going to come apart no amount of friction or force or whatever is going to break those two halves apart again okay so then we've got the um i you know i know there are actual official <laughs> names for these components but i don't know what they are Anyway, um, this is a very interesting to me. When I designed this, and I wanted to make a special note of this in the development log, basically I created a perfect torus fit to, around the tolerance uh, with a 0.2 millimeter um, spacing around the bearings. And then um, I cut it uh, diagonally instead of horizontally because I wanted it to be the type of bearing that just snaps together hence the snap bearing title but what I found is that weirdly enough even though it's a diagonal cut across the profile of the torus and the, the bearings go in without any trouble whatsoever um, when you put these two halves together they don't just seamlessly slide together. It requires considerable force. And I think 
I think this is designed for 10 bearings. I can't remember, but let me, let me see. I don't even know if I have 10 bearings. It looks like I'm one short. No problem. I found another one on the floor that I lost earlier. So let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Okay, so it's actually twelve bearings. And once again, the tolerances are ultra precise. So there's like probably less than 0.2 millimeters between each of these when it's fully enclosed. So yeah, like I was saying, it's a curious um, effect to the topology that when two um, halves of a torus are brought together and they're bisected diagonally, that it doesn't, as you can see, it doesn't just fit it doesn't just go together you've actually got to overcome some kind of a overlapping wall boundary with like I said considerable force so I'm gonna see if I can snap this down and by the way once this goes together you're not gonna get it together again without basically destroying it I mean it's still functional like this but as you can see there's quite a bit of damage So yeah, that's like a serious amount of force. And uh, even with the damage, you can see it's still, um, still functional, just not as smooth as before. And uh, of course, I didn't want this um, area to be open to outside elements, so I created this snap um, flange, basically, that this, this is the retainer this chamfer here and these are the little flexing anyway I'll just demonstrate it. it's much easier to see how it works in demonstration if I can actually get get it in the hole instead of off center god I really love to make these videos fun for myself so yeah anyway like that so that protects from dust and debris and rocks and stuff from getting in there and uh, yeah, so this is a wheel bearing, a snap wheel bearing, 100% PLA. And uh, eventually I'm going to make like prototype roller skates that snap onto uh, your um, shoes like the old, old school style. That's my plan for this. But um, I'm going to release it to printables in the public domain until I finish the rest of the components just because I don't know I uh, I was really pleased with this design ironically these damn bearings I spent a long time perfecting these like uh, in fact I probably spent five times as long on the damn bearings as I did on the um, the housing um, and a uh, little thing to note here, these are actually um, not isometric. The topology is not isometric, it's, um, it's geodesic. And uh, that's one of the reasons it has such a smooth um, topology. And I think it helps a little bit with the bearings working better. As you can see, this is the what happens when, when the hexagon does not fit properly because it's not fully seated in there. It's actually a rare occurrence. This is the only time this has happened in all the times that I've put all these bearings together and I've done over 20 now. So yeah, anyway, trials and tribulations of uh, 3D printing. Um, thanks for watching. Enjoy.